This is Inside Varsity Sports on the Sidelines Football Edition. Hello again, everyone. Lou Brogno with you alongside Rich DeCourt. We welcome you to St. Peter's Prep High School here in Jersey City, where the undefeated Marauders are getting ready for their regular season finale against a very tough challenge in the Green Knights of St. Joe's. And last week, Rich St. Joe's coming off a very tough loss, losing by one point to Seat Hall Prep, the first time the Pirates had defeated St. Joe's since 1976. And very uncharacteristically, St. Joe's has lost three of their last four and two in a row for the first time since 2010. So St. Joe's comes in here, you know, they're going to be riled up going up against this undefeated St. Peter's team. And of course, uh, the folks at home can see highlights of that St. Joe's Seton Hall prep game, right? Yeah, we have plenty of coverage of last week. We have the Seton Hall prep game, just an absolutely terrific affair on senior day down at the Kelly Athletic Complex in West Orange. We'll have a link in the description of that game down below, as well as Don Bosco facing off against DePaul Friday night under the lights at Granitelle Stadium. That game a little more lopsided, but what a game it was for Seton Hall and St. Joe's. Really got to give it to Coach Fitzgerald and his team coming up for that one on senior day. And, you know, it's really like you can't say you're shocking the world anymore because this non-public group four is just so yeah. crazy. You, you can't pick these games week to week. Well, this week, St. Peter's, as we said, coming in undefeated. The Marauders are 8-0 on the year. They've already wrapped up first place in the United Red Division. Last week, blasting Pope John by the score of 41 to nothing. Uh, and earlier this year, St. Peter's defeated Bergen Catholic by three points, defeated Bosco by four points. So those games were somewhat close. And uh, as they get ready for St. Joe's this week, I guess you could say it's the, the trifecta of the big three, Bosco, Bergen, and Joe's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of been the modus operandi this year, all year long for the, the Marauders, is, is playing in close games. It wasn't until recently you start to see maybe against Paramus Catholic, they widen the gap, and, and last week against Pope John, they, they had a big blowout victory over at Caven Point, just a, across the channel there. Um, but really, you know, it comes down to these grind them out football games that, that Rich Hansen's team this year have been in and have won under pressure, um, and they face a St. Joe's team that is hungry to right the ship. But right now, let's keep the focus on the Marauders. Earlier today, Lou had the chance to chat with the longtime head coach of St. Peter's Prep, Rich Hansen, and he asked him a little bit about where his team is at right now, at this critical juncture in the season. Well, I'm, I'm really pleased with where we're at, obviously. Um, overcome a lot uh, of adversity, like most teams have to get through uh, during the course of a long season. But kids have been resilient, playing really hard. Uh, we're, we're getting healthy now, and that's a good thing for us. So uh, looking forward to the weekend and then uh, bye week and, uh, and a chance to catch our breath. Uh, obviously, uh, St. Joe's coming in here this week, and uncharacteristically for them, uh, they've lost uh, three of their, out of their last four. Uh, what, what are the keys for you going up against them? Obviously, they're going to come in here very hungry. Yeah, I mean, St. Joe's is a great program. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we expect a, a real physical, you know, war, uh, as usual with, with Joe's. Uh, we don't pay attention to the last three or four weeks or whatever it is. We don't worry about any of that stuff. The bottom line for us is we got to worry about us, and like I said, we're getting healthy. I think we're playing pretty well. Uh, we have a game plan that we think is sound, and, and I'm sure they feel the same way. So it's really about us being the most physical team on the field and about you know, you know us being able to function under duress and being able to do that all year. So uh, we don't look at this version of anything, you know, any, anything different. We have to come out and be us and do us and uh, not worry about who we're playing necessarily because we know what we're going to get from them. But we have to control what we can control, and, and, uh, and our performance and our energy is top of that list. So... That's us. You know, Rich, obviously your offense has made a lot of big plays this year and, uh, and has uh, excelled on that side of the ball, but the defense has been outstanding. Not a lot of people talk about defense. Uh, defense last week gave up just 67 yards total offense. What's been the keys on the defensive side of the ball? They've been amazing all year. I mean, really the back end guys have been tremendous. We, we replaced a lot of guys from last year, and they've been, they've been awesome. Um, and then, we, you know, we have some guys up front. Ben Silver has been tremendous. Uh, K.J. Miles, George Rooks. Uh, Juan Miranda, those four have been the mainstays, and they've been awesome. Um, and then personally, I think we have the best linebacking core in the state. Uh, Cody Collin, Drew, uh, GJ uh, Mazella has been awesome. Uh, our guys have really, really uh, played well defensively. And, you know, my son and the defensive staff do a phenomenal job preparing those guys. Uh, we know when we walk in, we're going to be as prepared as you can be. And, um, and they've played. You know, they've made big plays and, and uh, bent sometimes but didn't break, and, and they're going to be challenged this week because Joe's runs the ball as well as anybody in the state. 
Rich Hansen in his 32nd season, looking for his 242nd victory this weekend against St. Joe's. It's been an outstanding season, obviously, for the Marauders on both sides of the ball, led defensively by their Division I Ohio State-bound linebacker Cody Simon. But on the offensive side, an electrifying quarterback, Taj Bullock, and Rich had an opportunity to talk to both, starting with the St. Peter's signal caller first. Taj, you guys have been a high-powered offense all year. Uh, you know, t can you tell me a little bit about some of the weapons you have to work with as a quarterback? Uh, we got guys everywhere. Even our backups are, are great. Everyone's just uh, we come in, we work every day, we put our heads down, we just work hard. And I rely on those guys. They they put pressure on me, get them the ball, and I put pressure on them to catch it too and do things that they do. They all do great. Tell me a little bit about your game as a quarterback. Obviously, you're a terrific dual threat guy who can throw the ball, run as well. Um, you know, what would you say just about how what you bring to the game as a quarterback? Uh, I try to do it all for my team. Whatever they need me to do, if I gotta get out the pocket, make a play on my arm, make a play on my feet, I do, I do everything they need me to do. Um, I, just, I just love doing everything I can. As you get to this point in the season, and you get closer to playoff actions, you know. Do the game start to take on a different feel? Does it start to feel a little more intense, or is it really just go out and ball in each week? Uh, yeah, we just put our heads down, we work. It's nothing different. We come in practice, uh, same mentality. We just want to be one and all for the week. We work real hard. No, no, it doesn't phase me, no, not at all. So you, in terms of what to expect from you know playoff games and, and anything that may come beyond, there's no real expectation in your mind of how that may play out? No. Uh, same thing every week. Uh, we just want to go ahead and do that. Nothing different. Hey, that's, that's good stuff. Um, what have you seen? I'm assuming we're into Wednesday in terms of preparation so far. I'm assuming you guys have done film already. What do you see in St. Joe's defense? Uh, they got great studs. They got players everywhere. Uh, we got guys too, so we're, we're ready. We just keep working hard. Obviously a terrific senior season for you. The All-America honors coming for you. Uh, it'll be a real exciting event for you in January. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about your journey at St. Peter's and how you've progressed to the point you're at now and, and maybe some of the folks that have helped you along the way here? Uh, it's probably been one of the best uh, experiences of my life. These four years, it's probably the best four years of my life. Uh, like the coaches I've met, the players I've met, my teammates, they, I couldn't have asked for better people. And, uh, you know, like there's so many people who have supported me. Like I, I could, my class uh, being one of them, like we all stick together. Like we're, uh, I, think, I feel like we're the like a close-knit group of people, and so we just, just do everything together, and, and I, I really thank them for that. And uh, my family, of course, they, they're, they were there for me every step of the way. Like my brother, he's, he's helped me. My, my parents have helped me, so I, I really can't, I can't thank too many people. It's, sure, yeah. sure. Uh, so. You speak a little bit about the brotherhood that you get at a school like a, a St. Peter's, um, and that kind of translates a little bit to the defense that you guys have, a, a lot of studs on the field for you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you would describe your own defensive unit? Uh, what kind of players are you? Uh, I, I'd say we're, we're tough guys. Uh, not not a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, you could say like me guys. Yeah, yeah. We, we're all together. Like everyone, everyone really works together, and uh, there's no there's no like selfishness. Sure. I'd say that like we uh, we all try to work together as much as possible. If if someone messes up, we're just helping to get back up and keep going. And I think it's it's a, our it's one of the things we teach is like relent, being relentless and working as hard as possible for as long as possible. And I think our team really does that well. And we've we've done it so uh, well so far this year. And we're just hoping to keep it going. You get to this later point in the season. Obviously, like the standings and all that noise is kind of locked up at this point. But a game like this against a team like St. Joe's, it obviously matters quite a bit just in terms of both of how you both in terms of how both teams are playing football at a critical time of the year. When you get into big games like this, does it change at all in terms of the feeling, or is it another game? I mean, it's, it is another game, but it, the intensity level, it's, it, has, it has to go up. And it's, these are one of the best teams we, we play like, for our entire careers, pretty much. This is one of the biggest games we have. And, and uh, I, I think our guys understand that it's a big game, and uh, our guys are excited. Like this is this is where it's at. It's going to be one of the biggest games of the week, and and we're just excited. We just want to get get out there and and get it done. So. And then now we're into Wednesday in terms of preparation. I've seen, I assume you guys have done film already. What do you see from the Green Knights offensively in terms of what they bring to the table? Uh, they're always a tough team. They're going to run the ball, and and we know that, and and they know that we know that, and and that's what they're going to do. And we just have to do our best to stop it. And and really just play tough defense. And I feel like the toughest team is going to win no matter what. So if we can do that, we'll be good. 
Well, Cody Simon talking about uh, St. Joe's running game, knowing uh, exactly what they're going to do on offense and what uh, St. Peter's is going to do defensively. And, of course, uh, St. Joe's runs the ball uh, with the best of them. Uh, Audrick estimated last week 247 yards, three touchdowns in that one-point loss to Seton Hall Prep. Yeah, another monster game for Estime uh, for St. Joe's. He's done that all year long. Of course, you know, the Green Knights relied on him a little more this particular week. Michael Alimo, their starting quarterback, the senior out with an injury. Not sure what his status is going to be for this coming contest on Saturday night. But either way, St. Joe's, with or without Alimo, has run the ball all year long, and they've ran it particularly well, just about against everyone but Don Bosco late in the season. They kind of put the squeeze on the Estime, Andre Epps sort of running attack that St. Uh, Joe's has had for the majority of the year. And obviously this week they're going to face possibly the best linebacking core in the state in St. Peter's and what the Marauders bring to the table. Otherwise, a very strong defense with, you know, solid seals in the secondary and a very aggressive defensive line. It's If you're a fan of that sort of old school lunch pail, ground and pound football, this is exactly what you get this, this Saturday night at Caven Point. Uh, two teams that are going to ground the ball out real hard, and it's just going to be the tougher guy winning out. And frankly, you know, it's it kind of gets to the point where St. Joe's, it's a must win game for these guys um, in terms of just writing the ship before the playoffs come around. You know, they've they've faced a lot in the past couple weeks um, in terms of being upset first by Don Bosco and then Seton Hall prep. You know, it's time for them to play up to their full potential and really play the brand of football they expect to play heading into the games that really count. Well, obviously, uh, for St. Peter's, uh, as we said, they have wrapped up the number one seed in first place uh, in the United Division, in the United Red Division. But for St. Joe's, a very important game as far as seedings are concerned is the Green Knights uh, will look to try to get into the top four or so so they can get a home game uh, in, in that first round. St. Peter's, on the other hand, hey, they're trying to become the first undefeated team in the Super Conference since it was formed in 2014. So a lot to play for. For, really for for both teams. Hey, there's other games uh, happening this weekend as well in uh, non-public, and one of them certainly is uh, Don Bosco Prep going up against Paramus Catholic. Of course, last week Bosco crushed a Paul 42 to six. So the Ironmen look like uh, they've got it going at this point in the season with their dynamic running back duo of Monongai and Berger. They're hitting the groove at the right time of the year. There, it was it was a matter where you know that they had the talent in the backfield. They had a younger offensive line, and Chuck Granatel has done a really nice job with that group, getting them up to speed at the right time. Putting up 42 points against DePaul last week. Check out those highlights. You'll see what they're capable of. And uh, Bergen Catholic also uh, playing very good football at the moment. Uh, Bergen Catholic 5-2 and two on the year uh, going up against DePaul this week. And, you know, they've been running in that uh, – two quarterback system all year with Andrew Bowl and Steve Angeli. Uh, they excelled last week, certainly, and uh, Ryan Butler at 161 yards rushing. So Bergen probably playing their best football of the season right now as well. Oh, yeah. Bergen Catholic, a team obviously battling through some injuries, losing their defensive leader in Jordan Morant for the year and Pearson Tobia, probably their best receiving option on the offensive side of the football. But, Nunes, but Vito Campanile's group has rallied quite a bit to get to the level that they're at. Obviously a big win last week against Paramus Catholic and as you start to see these non-public group fours late in the year I mean everybody kind of pays attention to those the St. Joe's upsets but really if you look at the games between all of these teams especially a number of the close games that St. Peter's has played and these guys have played in a lot of close games this year might be one of their their biggest advantages in terms of previous um, experience just handling the pressure of a big game going down to the wire you know you're seeing these all over the group. It's almost impossible to pick on a week-to-week -week basis who's going to win what. So, you know, with all these tight divisional matchups going on in the final week of the regular season, we really are going to have no idea what the non-public group four bracket is going to look like until Saturday after all the games have been played. Well, all most of those games, of course, that we mentioned uh, of great significance as far as the playoff pairings are concerned. But most eyes right here in Jersey City on the game between St. Joe's and St. Peter's over at Caven Point, 7 o'clock kickoff on Saturday night. Hey, that'll do it here from Jersey City on this uh, rainy day here <laughs> as the Marauders get ready for St. Joe's. That'll do it here for Inside Varsity Sports on the Sidelines. For Rich DeCourt and everyone here, I'm Lou Brockman. Thanks so much for joining us. You've been watching Inside Varsity Sports on the Sidelines, football edition.